Hello, I'm Henry T. Welcome to KZQ Channel 32, the show we call Be Inspired with Henry T. This is a show about inspiration many times over New Mexico Sportscaster of the Year. Yeah, it's been, it's been a good ride, man. You know, like, that's been good to me. I'll, I'll tell you, the first day that I got elected Secretary of State, my group, the first thing we did was say a prayer right out the door. About people who have overcome great obstacles in life to achieve their dreams. No one's going to give me anything. It's not going to be handed to me on the platter, so anything I have to get, I have to earn it. Who have become role models for others. So when I grew up, I knew that there would be a time that I would have to give back to the community somehow. Those who've gone on to be the best they can be and to inspire. 16,000 people watched Jim Holzman and his Bulldogs win the state championship. This man has been the head coach at Albuquerque High for 22 years. Hello again, I'm Henry T. Welcome to the show. Be inspired with Henry T. What a blessing. I mean a blessing to be here today and to sit here with an old friend, not real old because I don't want to age myself because we kind of grew up together. But I'll tell you, you're about to reconnect with one of the greatest high school basketball athletes of New Mexico history. Played at Bernalillo, New Mexico. Played for the Spartans, the running and gunning Spartans of Coach Henry Sanchez in Spartan Ellie, where I used to referee. And I'll tell you, if you've never watched a game in Spartan Ellie, then listen to us today. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like you to meet, once again, George Perea, one of the greatest of all time. George, how are you? I'm good, Henry. How are you doing? What an honor for me to have you with me today. Well, my, my, it's my pleasure and my honor to be here again with my an old goodness. colleague and friend and to reminisce a little bit and maybe inspire some people today. You've got a great story. Thank you. Bernalillo, New Mexico. When I think of Bernalillo in its basketball heyday, I love the community today. But back then, growing up as a college student, referee, and being able to put the stripes on and the whistle and go to Bernalillo, and officiate a St. Pius, Bernalillo game, whatever game. Spartanelli was always packed. Yes. Those are my memories, and a great coach on the sideline, your friend and mine, Henry Sanchez. Capsulize those great years, George. Well, um, I got to tell you, the, the legend of Bernalillo basketball is still alive and well. Uh, basketball is life in Bernalillo, and through basketball we learn values and things about life. Henry Sanchez to me was like another father, mentor, uh, an inspirational leader to me, and uh, pretty much kept us all and kept me and all of us in line getting those grades because the one thing we wanted to do was be a Bernalillo Spartan and play for Henry. Wow. Before then you had inspiration. Yes. Let's go where the credit really is deserved early on in your life, mom and dad. Who were they to you? My mom was a stay-at-home mom, uh, had some health issues, uh, wasn't well known, but a good mother. I grew up on a little uh, farm in the Bosque area of Bernalillo. My dad was a blue-collar worker, a truck driver, um, pretty much went, did his job, came home, took care of his family but taught me a lot about work ethics and what it's about before life as an athlete, doing things around the farm and, the, and to keep the household running as well. Wow. Fundamental life. Yes. Humble life. Yes. What do you take from there into the world? What we take from there is continuing to be good people, to learn from all of our mentors, which could be our parents, our coaches, family members, relatives, everyone has their mentors, and to continue on the journey that they put us and the path they put us on to be productive and wonderfully good people, especially in today's day and age when there's so much going on throughout the world and the country. How about your siblings? I don't have any siblings, Henry. I'm the only, really? I'm the only child. 
but uh, I grew up. A spoiled kid, ladies. That's why he never passed the ball. It's mine. Forget about getting it back. I'm teasing you. I know you are, Henry. No, I grew up next to a, a, a large family in Bernalillo that took me in like there was I was their brother and and uh, we had a great time but no growing up pretty much alone uh, my parents um, couldn't have children so I am ado adopted and uh, believe wow. it or not I'm not ashamed to say that but I was born in Santa Fe and um, baptized believe it or not in the Basilica or the Cathedral back then so wow. I'm very blessed to have that happen God bless you now you move on through school yes you understood the value of grades Yes. Working hard in school, early on in life. Mom and dad, that was tough love, I guess, huh? Do your homework tonight, George. Well, we always had to do, take care of the animals first, do the homework, and then if you still had time, you could go out in the backyard and shoot some hoops. So sometimes I was in the backyard at 10 o'clock at night shooting hoops because I had to take care of other things first. Wow. Very. You know, my image of you running down that floor, one of the big men in Bernalillo, Basketball history, 6'3", yes. could run, dunk, pass the ball through the legs behind the back, spin it on his finger, play defense galore, a versatile athlete, as I recall. Well, thank you for those kind words, Henry. I, I uh, appreciate that. Man, mm -hmm. uh, the guys around you, <laughs> equally as talented. Definitely were. It, it takes a team. Um, to win championships and to continue on journeys in life. And all of them with nicknames. Yep. Give me a handful of nicknames on your squad. <laughs> TP, uh, Joe Moco. <laughs> Horsey. Horsey, Pollo, Stymie. Everybody in Bernalillo has a nickname. <laughs> Isn't that incredible? Yep. And unselfish as teams will ever think about being a different star every night. Yes. Why? It's that uh, thing that coaches instill in you that sometimes it's your night and sometimes it's not. So know your role, know what you got to do, go out there and do the job. And if you're not scoring, get rebounds. If you're not uh, getting rebounds and play some good defense, um, you know, cheer your, your colleagues from the bench if you're not able to get out there and play or do any good job. So it's all of the above, knowing the role. Now, I'd say visiting teams would be driving their bus into Bernalillo, and the Spartans would be pressing them on the freeway exit already. <laughs> yep. Am I right? Yes, sir. And press them all the way back to the freeway yes, sir. when the game is over. Yes, sir. Pressing, running, gunning, outlet pass. You made it famous. Coach Henry Sanchez had a philosophy, and you made it work. Well, you had a good mentor and a good teacher. Yeah. But how do you get a team to buy into all that physical activity. You have to be in great shape to play that hard for that long a time. Henry, we had a, a team in 71 that I was the tallest player at 6'3". Uh, everybody else was under six foot. And we were beating Albuquerque teams. We were beating the Highlands and Manzanos. We were beating Sandias. We were beating El Dorados, La Cueva, I mean, uh, uh, Cibolas. We were beating all those teams. Albuquerque High was the only exception. We, we never did beat them, but they had an amazing team. But the mentor and coach we had had belief in us that we could beat anybody on any given night. And we would go out there with that mentality saying, we're that good. Wow. The inspiration that Coach Sanchez gave you, it was in your bloodstream. And it spread through you to the little kids on Main Street in the junior highs of Bernalillo. It was contagious, that inspiration. Everybody wanted to be a Bernalillo Spartan. Accurate? It's accurate, and that's what, what they, they still do. They still have the little guys playing the hoops in the backyard wanting to be a Bernalillo Spartan someday. It's, it's just tradition. And, and to play in Bernalillo Spartan Alley. Yes. Describe that. Oh, it's uh, amazing when you have a capacity crowd and you're turning people away and you've got people that remember you, elderly, younger, little kids. It's just amazing, um, indescribable. Yeah, you're like Bob King or Coach Norm Allenberger's Lobos, only in Bernalillo, little kids there seeking an autograph <laughs> after the game. 
Yeah, they, they know who you are, definitely, and they, and they look up to you. That's why it's always good to be a good role model in your community. But moving on through more inspiration from Henry Sanchez, yes. academics was a must. Character was a must. If you don't do those two, and they were mandatory, you don't play the game. Not only that, you have to deal with him. And it wasn't uh, fun when Henry got mad at you, but he was always checking on you, making sure you were in class, checking with the other teachers, making sure you're pulling the grades. And if you did, you'd get on the court, you'd play, you'd practice, and if you didn't, you'd pay the price. But not only on the court, as you said, he was your friend yes. and leader off the court. Yes. You'd see him in church. Yes. You'd see him at the supermarket. And he was always so congenial, and such a loving, caring man, Coach Henry O. Sanchez. Yes. What can you tell us about Coach Sanchez that none of us may never know? Henry cared about his students. Uh, an example being is that after I graduated or before I graduated, he actually worked really hard to get me a basketball scholarship to play under another legendary coach, Dick Dragmeister, at Western. Wow. He actually also had given me an opportunity to be take a congressional appointment at Annapolis Naval Academy, which I did turn down for various reasons. But he afforded those opportunities to me and always checked on you after, after high school. Uh, how's he doing? Is he doing okay? Are you making your grades? Has he graduated from college yet? He was always there to check on his students, if you will, because he cared. It wasn't just, I'm done using you, you won me a championship or a district title and not stay in touch with you. No, he'd, he'd always follow up with you and check on you and always a handshake and a smile and always welcome you no matter who was. I remember walking into Las Vegas, Nevada, one, or uh, New Mexico one time and he was the mayor of Las Vegas and he welcomed me into his office and said, come on, sit down, let's chat, bring me, let's catch up on old times. Uh, you know, many politicians make that, and he had a busy day ahead of him, make that time for you. Wow. We, we're at halftime. Yes. We're going to have a chalk talk. Okay. And we're going to visualize Henry Sanchez coming in there and being object with you with your first half of play, George. All right. All right? Okay. But ladies and gentlemen, a very serious matter. We're going to talk about a heartbreak in this very successful man's life and his wife as well. We'll talk about the personal family life and a tremendous loss in their life. When we come back, don't you dare go away. Wow, what an honor to have my buddy George Perea with us today here on KZQ Channel 32. Stay right there. back with the famous George Perea, one of the greatest high school players in our state's history. He's a humble man, probably a little strange hearing that description, but you know, I think I'm qualified to say who is, who is not the greatest player list in our state. I've seen a lot of players, George, and I watched you play a lot, and I mean it when I describe that you were that good. I mean it sincerely. Now, after high school, you go to college. Yes. And then you marry your childhood sweetheart. Yes. Tell us the story. Well, I, I uh, knew my wife's brothers and older brothers and sisters for a while, and I came back on break from uh, Western uh, for a winter break and went out with my wife. Her name is Francie. Uh, she was a Montano. She's Perea now. We've been married for 42, going on 43 years. She wow. is my rock. She is my everything. She knows me inside and out. She watched me play at Western. She watched me run track and field at Western. Um, 
And like I said, she's the rock of our family and the inspiration that I live for every day. Describe her for me, even more than that. <laughs> she is a caring, nurturing, wonderful, common sense, just wonderful, family-oriented. Everything is about family. And she's one of eight children, uh, comes from a wonderful family, wonderful upbringing. But it was all, always about disciplining our kids in the right way, at the right place, at the right time, making sure that they grew up close to each other and that we grew up as a family. Made time for uh, her and I alone and made time for me and my two children whenever it was possible in our busy work days. She is still working for APS uh, as a teacher and going to retire someday. I'm a retired former school administrator, uh, 39 years in public school finance, but kept our family going the late nights when I'd have to be at board meetings, uh, kept us together on family vacations, kept us organized, and kept us believing in each other through the good and the bad. And there are, like you said earlier, some rough times. Let's get right into uh one of the toughest times of your life. What happened? Well, Henry, uh, I have two children, my daughter, Crystal, who is my other inspiration in rock, uh, and my son, Matthew, who graduated from El Dorado High School in 2004. Uh, three months, four months after his graduation, he, was tragi he, he died in a tragic car accident, single car accident here in Albuquerque. And uh, it's the world's parents' world's worst nightmare that we live every day to this day. But I have some inspirational stories about our journey and how we got to where we're at today and how we continue on. But Matthew and my daughter next to my wife are what I live for every day. Even though my son isn't here, I hope and I live for the day that I meet him again. And I know I will. The relationship that you had you and your son, tell me about it. Well, he wasn't, he, he, he liked athletics, but he was more into golf. So he was a very good golfer. Uh, never went out for the golf team, but he loved sports. Always asked me a lot about basketball and cars, because I know cars, cars are another thing that I like. And uh, always testing my knowledge. And you know, he'd say things like, what's faster, a challenger or a charger, you know? <laughs> And we get into that level of discussion, or who's a better player, Michael Jordan or Kobe Bryant, you know, and get into that. So the relationship was always there and the things to do, and those things I greatly miss. Uh, but he is an inspiration to our family. My daughter considered him her best friend. Oh. Uh, he was very close to mom, of course, that's mama's boy. I have, my daughter is daddy's girl. But uh, we still remain tight and close-knit and do a lot of things as a family. Mm -hmm. But it took us a while to get there, Henry. It took us a while to get, you, you never get over grief. You have to get through grief. And to get through grief, you have to believe in each other, have faith, and figure out what you have to do to survive the next minute, the next day, the next week, the next How did day. your faith get your family through that tragedy? We believe in our family of what we call the three F's. And I remember my mother-in-law one time saying, oh my goodness, what are you going to say? Well, it's not that F, okay? But it's faith, family, and friends. And that's what we believe in. You have to have faith to have a family, and you have to have a good family and good friends around you. A lot of us know a lot of people, but they're not there through you thick and thin, friends. Friends that don't judge you, friends that are there through thick and thin are your friends. And like I said, faith is the utmost. We were driving out of town on a trip one time and I gotta share this story. And I asked my daughter and my son in the back seat of the car, if you could meet anyone today, dead or alive, and have a conversation with them for one hour, who would it be? My daughter said, Walt Disney, Michael Jordan. Not a hesitation and my son popped out and he says, the Lord Jesus Christ. I mean, he wasn't even 16 years old. And I turned around and I go, wow, what would you say? He said, I want to know what it's like in heaven. I want to know what it's like that our family members that have gone before us, what they're like and what, what they're doing. 
For a 16 year old to say that just boggled my mind. That's how mature he was. And I hope that everybody communicates with their children, pick their brain, get to know them. Let me ask you what might seem like a common question, but I want you to think instinctively. How much did you love your son? Infinity. There is, there is no amount. Uh, my wife coins a phrase, and I, I'll share it with you. She says, I love you to the moon and back. And that kind of sums it up. I guess if you had to use a unit of measure, that would be it. You and your wife obviously were close at the beginning. Is there any way to measure how close a couple can get? And now your daughter, now you're three, you were four. How do you measure that closeness with a word, with an adjective? I'm going to ask you an impossible question, but there's people out there that are striving towards love, togetherness. Give them that hard hitting. Maybe it's impossible to describe, I don't know, but I throw that on you today. I'd have to say, Henry, that love is a four letter word that people use often, but some people don't understand the meaning of it. To love means you take each other unconditionally, and it also means that you pick and choose your battles and make sure that the battles you pick are worth fighting for and make sure that whatever you do in your life, that you put that person on a pedestal and would do anything for them. Uh, love means sharing, caring, um, continuing to be a good person, not only to each other, but to all those around you. You know, many men out there might be a little distracted. Something happened. They faded away from that description of love that they once had and they lean on other people to try to satisfy and fulfill that need of love. For those who have lost it, maybe those who would rather go to happy hour at five o'clock rather than to go straight home to their loved ones, what do you say to them about bringing them back together? First of all, I think you gotta have a lot of faith and faith will help you to understand what love is really about. Sometimes love is just about doing what you have to do, doing what's right, and not about what you want to do. Wow. And that's the easiest, simplest way I can communicate yeah. that. You're a humble man, <laughs> live a very simple life. You make great, great decisions along the way. Yes. There are a lot of young couples out there that that struggle through the early parts of marriage. They get along, they're striving to have what you and your beautiful wife have. What's your advice to the young couples of New Mexico? I guess truly understand what the meaning of love is and life. And always practice the three Fs, faith, family, and friends. Pick your friends very carefully. And always Understand that it's not always about you. Sometimes it's about your spouse. And you have to give up things. You have to understand things. And sometimes it's just as simple as, I don't know what you're going through, but I'm going to give you a hug and a kiss. I'm going to take you back to that moment you found out about losing your son. And I don't mean it to be extra dramatic in any other way or anything close to that. But share with us what that felt like when you just got the initial word that you, your son was not here any longer. I was working in uh, the school district, was to hear grants, visiting with the superintendent, and I got a phone call. And it said, you need to get to the emergency room at University Hospital. Your son's been involved in a bad accident. And I asked him, is he okay or going to be okay? And the doctor just said, you need to get here. And again, I asked, is he okay or going to be okay? And he said, just get here. Wow. I knew then it was bad. I got in the car, which I shouldn't have, 
and drove 80 miles into Albuquerque, probably doing 100 miles an hour, with my mind not on driving, but praying, praying all the way that he's going to be okay, that I'm going to get lift to see him, the, the speak to him, that uh, maybe a surgery or something. And when I pulled up to the hospital, they took me in and the chaplain took us in the room and I knew. And uh, he was gone. And from that day on, 14 years ago, it's been a parent's worst nightmare. But through faith and family, I've been able to survive and carry on. The first five years of that grief, I'm not going to lie, they were horrible. Wow. In our final minute, I can't tell you in any exaggerated form, there's no adjective to, to accurately say what it means to me to reunite with my longtime friend, George Perea. I have I, one final story for you, Henry. Yeah. Sorry. I want people out there that lost loved ones, whether it's family, whatever, to listen and watch for the signs they send you. I went to a motor vehicle one day to get a new license plate on the truck I had purchased. And I went there and I said, I want a Western New Mexico University license plate. Great, which style do you want? And I saw one on the wall and I picked it out. The guy went to the back and he brings a license plate out to me. And my son had already passed away by then. This is probably four or five years ago. And the license plate number was 0603. 0603 means my son was born in June 3rd. Talk about a sign from him. He says, Dad, I want you to have this, and I want you to continue living your life, and know I'm okay, and I will see you soon. But that's a sign they sent you, so look for those signs. Wow. True story. Powerful. We'll do part two next time <laughs> with your beautiful wife. Awesome. That would daughter. be awesome. She would love that. Okay. She would love that. Wow, what a pleasure. Thanks for, Thank you for the, the honor. tremendous inspiration. Thank you for the honor and the privilege, Henry. Wow. George Padilla, one of the greatest I ever saw play on that high school level. Went to Silver City, became a star there for Dick Dragmeister at Western New Mexico University. And today, he's here with us to lift us up and inspire us with this powerful story. We'll do it again tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock. We'll try to get this inspired again tomorrow. Join us again. And a special thank you to George Perea for being here on KZQ, thank Channel you. 32. If you've got a story, don't forget to call me with it, 907-4523, or email originalgameface at gmail.com. It's been great talking with you today, right here on KZQ. Remember, we're on every morning right here. Be inspired with Henry T. 8 o'clock on KZQ, Channel 32.